my mom used to use this expression, like never cut off your toes to fit in a boot. Business is messy and unpredictable. Sometimes lonely. So lonely. So lonely. (laughs) And inspiration can often come from really weird places. We pick up where the bullet point blogs and the highlight reels leave off. We start with the stories. So here's my story. I got a um, an email from a former student of mine. She was in my public speaking class, and uh, maybe uh, a couple years ago, they um, the semesters run together after a while. And she said, "Professor, I was hoping that I could talk to you. I could give you a call at some point, whenever it's convenient for you." And so I said, "Sure, you know, just." I gave her some times and. And she said, she emailed me back and she said, I just, thank you so much. I just, it's nothing really urgent. I just wanted to to talk to you for a minute. I said, sure. And I really assumed. I want to like jot down the three or four ways I think this story might go. Because, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, is this going to be an assumed, HR episode or? <laughs> no, I thought that she was basically <laughs> like signing her first lease or buying a house or something contracty. Like, like Oh, for law. I'm like, what? She wants money from me? No, no. <laughs> oh, gotcha. I thought, like, I, like law advice. Or something. I thought she probably, yeah, she was okay. probably doing okay. something either. I, yeah, what my memory is mine, that, not ahead. that she was like a business major starting a business. So, but I just oh, assumed okay. she was probably signing a contract and all that stuff. Fair enough. So we we got on the phone, and she said, we, "Do you remember me?" I said, "Yes, of course I remember you." She said, "Do you remember what I I talked about in class?" I said, that one, you're going to have to, your speeches, you're going to have to refresh my (laughs) recollection. So she gave me an example. And I said, yes. And I remembered exactly the speech and and how she gave it and all that stuff. And I said, yeah. So what's what's up? Because your email, maybe I read it wrong, but your email sounded like you were upset. She goes, yeah. Do you think I I think about things too much? And I said, what? And she said, well... I mean, do you do you just think that I should, uh, you know, like I think about things, but I should just not mention it or I should not talk about what I'm thinking? And I said to her, I'm not going to use your real name, so let's just say it's Lisa. I said, Lisa, is somebody telling you that? Who put this? It, it sounds yeah. like somebody put this in your head. And she goes, yeah, I've just been, you know, some. Unless some like, she's that good at overthinking and she put it in her own head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. But, she said, some of my friends and then this guy I've been talking to and and I would, I would give my opinion and whatever. And I just, you know, he told me, well, you just think think too much about things. Wah, and I wah, hear that wah. often enough. And I just wanted to know, do you think so? Okay. Okay. I'm like, I'm like pulling my fighting gloves on here. Um, first of all, so, be- oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Finish. Well, finish. Said, so what I was saying to her is I was so appalled by this. Yeah. I mean, I have to tell you, to be honest with you, I have to tell you that I was kind of flattered that she would reach out and call me because it was obviously- That was going to be my first comment. Like uh, like before I went into fight mode, I was going to say, let's not skip over the fact that when someone was having what might have been their first like, you know, crisis, you know, identity crisis, sort of like questioning that a past student reached out to you, which I think is is really yeah. touching and really- Important. I thought it was so. it was great, but I was really irritated, if not angry, mm-hmm. at the person who was telling her basically, or people who call themselves her friends, yet yeah, stop being so much of you. Yeah. yeah. And just adopt yourself to the behavior that we think is acceptable. Yeah. Which is and, um, yeah. This is yeah, uh... so there was so much in that. I think it's it's personal, it's developmental, it's business, and it's I think everything that you might have something to say about that. It's so. everything. I, the fact that I have controlled myself this much to let you finish I your story know. is impressive. It's admirable. Impressive. It is admirable at that. Um, this this is one of those rare times that I wish we had like checked off explicit on on our podcast rating yeah. because there are swear words that I would very much like to use as to how much this really blows my lid about things. Blows my lid. What am I from like 1937? Mm-hmm. Um, so so here's here's a couple of things. This entire conversation of too much is like the bane of 
all my favorite people's existence. I don't know anyone that I love and adore that didn't navigate their way through some muck of being too much something, often just generally too much, too loud, talks too much. I mean, I think I've mentioned this on the show before. Every single report card of my elementary years said that I taught Jody, you know, she's great this and she's got good grades, but she talks too much. Um, I also get thinks too much, writes too much, like laughs. My kids say I laugh too loud. Like, I feel like there's sort of like a too much club in the world. (laughs) And my mom, fortunately, and even with her support in this way, it it still has just always been a real like Achilles heel kind of thing. Um, My mom used to use this expression, like never cut off your toes to fit in a boot, which I just think is such a great metaphor because that's what this dude is asking her to do. Like, please cut off some of your toes so that you fit in this boot that I have for you. But here's, here's, so I could go on and on and on about how much I think that is ridiculous. And anybody who thinks you're too much of anything should just immediately be classified as not your person. Yeah, they're not, um, he's not with the right people. If those he's people not with the right people. That, and and I can tell you right now that the older I get, the somehow the more I find around me people who, who, who not just can stand to tolerate me the way that I am, but actually like welcome it, like openly welcome it. Like, oh, I like that you write me these really long responses in Facebook messenger or whatever, because I can, like you, I can hear you talking and I can hear all the things you're thinking about. And I like the way you think. And this is why I I'm telling this whole like personal side of it, that, that, the difference between those two things, the one thing in this story like contracts you. And I actually just felt myself do it. I was talking about that friend who was commenting on, I like that you, when you write me long things, blah, blah, blah. Like there's something so expansive about that and it changes who you are and it changes what resources you have to show up to a thing or it can, I mean, you can do it on yourself as well, but I think so many people get chopped off early and then it stunts their growth in their career growth, their personal development, because um, no, all the things that make you a leader knows. are big things. I'm, I'm in meetings all the time, and I don't, I don't, um, I always hesitate, as as I know you do, to classify people by, you know, category, whether it's race or gender or whatever. But I do see this risk a lot of times in in female professionals who are coming up in the ranks especially, and I've talked to a number of them, especially if you're the only woman in a room full of men. And if somebody along the lines has told you that you think too much or whatever, I, I've i seen people, and I've heard women describe this, that they had to fight against their tendency to just shrink into a corner. And then if you shrink and you hesitate in contributing, then you're seen by everybody else as having no contributions to make. Yeah, and no, yep. So your growth is stunted. Yep. Yep. And I think absolutely. I mean, it's definitely a, a, um, I grew up in a long lineage of very loud women (laughs) (laughs) who interrupt each other all the time. So, um, I was, but I think that's part of why I've always done well in male dominated industries is that I'm, I have a terrible interrupting people problem. I mean, I do it to you all the time, but that means I never, uh, you're like, really? I hadn't (laughs) noticed. Sometimes you let me speak. What are you talking about? I do. I get excited about a thought and I can't, it's like total ADD. Um, which by the way, very hysterically, my kids, you know, we all have the same learning challenges, at least one of my kids, if not both of them have some ADD stuff. And we were at a parent teacher conference and she was talking about how they were really working with my son on not interrupting and, you know, raising his hand. And I was making the mom face like, yes, I know we work on that at home as well. And, you know, and I was, I was being very serious or whatever. I kid you not, like 30 seconds later, she was talking, an idea popped into my head and I was like, oh, by the way, like blah, blah, blah. And she just looked at me and I was like, sorry. <laughs> obviously we we need to work on that at the household but um so yeah so that's interrupting but you know what i i also think that the same thing i i think a different thing happens to men like they they don't they don't get squelched in that like contribute to a conversation but i think they get they get their toes cut off in a whole other swath of stuff when young about like, you're not allowed to be too emotional or too sensitive or too this or too that. Like there's, I definitely think there's a very distinctive in business female issue. Like you were just raising, which is, which is for certain. Um, 
And then what happens if you defy that in some, especially in some industries, you, suddenly you're, you know, there's a whole string of names I also can't say in a not explicit um, thing, where if you're not the quiet wallflower of a woman, um, and and both in person and in business, I, I think that same kind of stuff happens to um, to men too, just in, in different ways where they don't think they're allowed to show emotion. But the, I, I got so fear, I don't think I've ever been as mad at my kids uh, last week or last years when they were making fun of the way I laugh. Cause when I'm truly laughing, I sort of like this loud guffaw laugh or something. And they're making fun. I, don't know, I remember saying what a terrible thing to make fun of somebody for They're like their most authentic, just like expulsion of joy. And that's the moment you're going to kick them in the shins. Like, I'm sorry if it's a little loud, but come on, like it's laughter. <laughs> Jeez. So I just, I, I think anything that trims a person down and files off their edges is just like criminally unfortunate. No, and you're right about um, on the on the male side where I've seen it, where I've experienced it is there's a stereotype, certainly in a lot of the management teams, a lot of the boardrooms that I've been in, that you're supposed to take really hard line, aggressive action. Right. You're supposed to, whether it's in politics, you might be a hawk, you know, the, the whole thing. And so if you're in the room, as I have been saying, well, wait a minute, I know that we can do this, but I don't really think it's fair. I think that we should do this the other way, or perhaps we're not taking the other side into account. And you get a lot of blowback. Mm-hmm. Whose side are you on? Oh, right. or go ahead. <laughs> I don't, oh, look at him. And then there are all these misogynistic mm-hmm. things. Oh, do you have to go out and check your skirt or whatever? Uh huh. Uh-huh. Because because all of a sudden you're not fulfilling the gender role if right. you're being too sensitive. So yes, there are many, and it doesn't have to be related to whether it's gender or you know the other things, you know, race, sexual orientation, but. It doesn't even have to be related to category. It can just be related to this person. I mean, oh, look, know, back to your example, thinking too much. do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and then all of a sudden, you can't bring your authentic point of view and, and you lose something. And, and I want to go back to the original example, thinking too much. Now, now, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step back from what I was going to say. For, I started to say, when is that ever a problem? It's totally a problem if it's causing you a problem. If it's, if it's creating an unending spiral of anxiety for you that you can't pull out of, okay, maybe that is thinking too much. Or that's actually, that's not even thinking too much. That's allowing thinking to become worrying, which is slightly different. You know, there's there's some blurry lines there. So I guess in some cases, but I do not suspect that that was the context of care in which this gentleman <laughs> or not so gentleman. You know, and, and I didn't ask up. because I was right. so offended by the, by the yeah. proposition. I didn't, and I didn't want to get into deep into her, her personal life or, or ask also wise. Her thing that she didn't feel comfortable doing. What I was basically saying is if people are telling you not to be yourself, they're not your people. Yeah, they're not your people. And and um, and thinking too much. I mean, the world could use a few people who think a little bit and actually will take the time to get into a thing. And I just, it's, it's so interesting to me I can, because I can most pull from my own personal experience on this anyway is I, I feel like at least once a week, I notice, like I actively notice that the things that I am most valued for now, like the things I get literally paid for, or the things that just even friends or family really appreciate, are pretty much the list of things that other people have, uh, other people have said I was too much about. And I think that's really, like, instead of it being a saw, that cuts off toes to get in the boot. I think it's more of like a, a um, oh, what are those? What are I was wondering like? how you were going to bring this home, by the way. I was like, okay, it's not a saw. It's not a saw. No, I'm totally switching metaphors, but I, I like a navigational device, but I was thinking of this, what's the stick with the water? Like the wa- divining, the rod? divining rod? Divining rod, kind of, yeah. That's a terrible metaphor. Um, I would like to point out while I can that I only got three hours of sleep last night. So I'm, I, my brain is like, firing in weird ways but on our next episode we will Jody will explain how <laughs> the divining rod fits in the boot it doesn't it's a terrible metaphor but here's what I meant it's like a litmus test for finding your people and and so it probably goes back to that quote I know we've used it in an episode before that I heard one time about 
you know, everything about your marketing or everything about your business should be that dog whistle that only your yeah. ideal clients hear. Mm-hmm. I think this falls in that exact same category. If if somebody thinks I think too much or talk too much or write too much or whatever, I'm like, okay, cool. Thanks for allowing me to realize you are not my person. Move along. But, but the or, other part, returning yeah. to your divining rod, because I think it's absolutely apt, is Thank that you for saving that. The, no, but the too much <laughs> is your divining rod. You know, I think that you should follow your too much into the places where that's an exact, precise fit, where it fulfills a real need, yes. because that's your home. Right. And you're likely to find your people there. And I don't know what what Lisa and my story was, quote, thinking too much about, Mm -hmm. but I would suspect that she was knowing her as I as I do remember her. She's she's quiet. She's very smart. And she's not one who's prone to just leap into ill considered actions or ill considered situations. And I think she's very deliberate, not boring in a way or anything like that. But I think she's very careful about how she Mm -hmm. um, moves forward in the world. I I have this theory and I've never, I've never spent enough time with it to really prove it out. So I I don't think this is a, you know, a a placebo, not a placebo, that's not the word I want, the panacea, like apply to everything kind of thing. But um, I think so often, if I flip through a bunch of examples of either my own or other people's too muchness things. It is, it's always when it's like asking the other person of something they don't want to give, Mm -hmm. or it's it's like, it's always about the other person. They don't, what they're really saying is I, I'm not big enough for you. Like I don't have enough capacity for all that you have to bring to this conversation. I'm not ready for this level of whatever it is that you're bringing. And that to me was a huge shift when I started to notice that kind of like, oh, you think too much or you just, you know, you always want to, someone said to me like, oh, you, you always just want to like make things as good as they can be. <laughs> and I was like, um, yes. yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> like, was that a, was that an insult? Cause you said it in a really insulty tone. <laughs> like, that's a huge compliment. Like, so I, I, I think it's, if we stick with the boot metaphor for a moment, maybe what it is, instead of the saw, it's actually that goofy foot sizing thing. <laughs> it's just like, oh, yeah. you need a butt, like this, you're, you need a bigger size boot than this. So I think it really says more about how good of a fit the people around you are than it does. It should never, ever be a, you know, a a classification of your value or worth or shape or size or texture, any of those things. But I do think that it's, it could be a really useful tool in growing as an organization. If you're actually on the lookout Mm. for somebody who is quote unquote too much in some respect for their current situation. Oh yeah. Because that's a real opportunity for evolution. If you have somebody who is, in a, you know, the, the, the job equivalent of just putting on headlights on Fords on an assembly line, right. but you realize that they think too much, then it's not a criticism of them, but they're misaligned with the job and you're missing opportunities. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I just was in a conversation a couple of weeks ago with a team and they keep having all these problems with this person. But then I sat in on a few meetings and every single time, it, like I just, I saw it and, and there are other things involved. So I know it's not this simple, but it was really hard for me to overlook this. This person has this like really strategic brain and they keep chiming in with like, well, you know, shouldn't we like be thinking this way? And this company was really just wanting the, they're upset because this person's not doing a good job of like, take tab B, stick in slot A, take tab B, stick in slot A. And they're like, we just need, before we can talk about, you know, more you could be doing, we need you to do that well, which I've said myself, like I, I, I subscribe to that. You got to do this part well, you got to be able to contribute where you are. So I believe that, but what a missed opportunity. Cause this person always brought so much value to these conversations and it's just not even getting heard. Well, you know, and and I see that in in my firm as well. I mean, I've worked on a number of really complicated and document intensive cases with Lacey, and you know Lacey. Um, And I have literally triple the amount of experience that she does. I've been doing this for 30 years. And so it was only um, 
when we developed just such a great working relationship and she started to say more, not just do what she was assigned to do, but started saying, Hey, have we thought about this or what about mm-hmm. doing this? Or how about this other thing? And she was not shy and retiring to begin with, which is a great thing, <laughs> but she became much more comfortable in saying, you know what? I, maybe we're thinking about this the wrong way. And that's become one of the, the best and most valuable parts of our collaboration Yeah, because she's going to think about things completely differently than I do. And, and just as often as I'm right, she's right. And it, it's, it adds such a dimension, but our industry is such that that's not the typical way to go. You're supposed to be an associate and you're supposed to just stay in your lane. Mm. Well, you know, that's the funny thing though. You, I, I guess, I mean, it's possible you would have gotten that from her if you had acted this way in the beginning, but if you had spent her first few years with, with you, um, you know, telling her she was too much of anything all the time, yeah. you would not have likely seen that Lacey who then extended, you know, who would have even tried to stand even taller than she already was to try Either and be like, left. yeah, or, or she just she would have kept it to stayed, herself. She would have stayed and she would have been, so you know, small. 50% as effective as she is now. And that is the irony here, because I think what ends up happening is that, because I don't think anyone notices, um, I don't, I think 99% of people will hear this episode and totally agree with every word I said, and you said, and never realize, like they may be the person who's telling other people they're too much. I don't think anyone realizes they are the, you're too much person because they're just sort of expressing, they're like, oh my gosh, you're, you're too loud. You're too this, you think too much. And they think they're, they don't realize they're doing that to people. And I see in companies all the time when you too much people, and then later down the line, you're talking to me because you're not getting like discretionary above and beyond effort out of people. And after a few conversations, I'm like, oh, they got their fingers slapped back when they were like, just trying to sort of stand up as tall as they are. And they took that as cut off those toes so that you can fit in and stay here. And so the two things are incredibly related. And unfortunately, I think the too much part often happens accidentally. Yeah, I think it does. And I think that in order to have that honest conversation with you, are you the one that is constricting somebody? I think that the shift in thinking has to go in your own internal dialogue from am I restricting somebody to allowing yourself to think, how am I restricting Mm -hmm. someone? Because if you Mm -hmm. take it as an assumption that you are, regardless whether you think you are, if you take it as an assumption that you are and say, how am I doing that? Then it frees you up to say, Oh, okay. Or even better, even if you're not doing it, I think it would make you even more expansive in where you're like even le- less not doing it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just fin- finish that <laughs> thought for yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> choose your own adventure. Choose your own adventure. <laughs> I love Jody's metaphors really are a choose your own adventure. Oh love- my gosh. This is like like metaphor salad today. <laughs> Even, Wait, even just, that's a crappy end? metaphor. Can we just end on metaphor salad? Metaphor salad. I want croutons. <laughs> so that's our story. But the discussion doesn't have to end here. No, it does not. In fact, we don't want it to. No, we don't. <laughs> that is why we actually have our private Facebook group. Which we started to make sure that we could get your comments, your rants, your thoughts. Your stories. Your stories. You can find links to that group as well as show notes and links to subscribe via email and how to find us just about anywhere you can possibly find podcasts at SoHere'sMyStory.com. And you can also find us on Facebook and Twitter at SHMS Podcast. And since we know it takes a village. Yes, it does. <laughs> we'd like to thank our village, our super talented, incredibly patient team. And occasionally snarky Ooh, team. Yeah, but in the best of ways. In the best Lovingly of ways. Snarky. Yes. <laughs> Good mockery. So a huge shout out to the people who actually help us produce our show. Uh, first, our sound engineer, Tom Hansen. Thanks to Christy Schmier for our brilliant show notes and all the other fantastic writing she does for us. And to Taylor Mathauer for doing... Just a little bit of everything. Including wrangling us. Including wrangling us. <laughs> Which is no small feat. No, it's not. This is Jody Hume. And I'm Elliot Wagenheim. And you've been listening to So Here's My Story.